Welcome to Crosspoint this morning. I'm Pastor John, and I'm so excited to be with you today. We are here in our last week of our series about King David, and it's the best one yet. It's a story you may have heard of about David and Goliath, and we're going to see how digging into the story helps us understand where our strength comes from right here, right now. We at Crosspoint know that life is best when we live it connected with God, so that's what we would love to do uh, for you here today. So with great music and message and some time for prayer and joining with Christians throughout the world and doing the things the churches do when they gather, we are going to hopefully help you feel more connected with God today. If there's a way that we can help you feel more connected, please reach out to one of the live stream hosts that you're watching with or to us directly. Uh, right at cplakewood.info at our website. We would love to help you get connected, find uh, a group to be a part of, or just answer any questions that you might have. Because we know that Jesus is the one who rescues us. And that our life, the best life we want to live, is when we live it connected with Him. So without further ado, please join me in worshiping today. I'm so excited that you're here to worship with us today. Make sure you check in online and chat with us while we're worshiping together today. Let's sing. One, two, three. <laughs>
Did you enjoy those songs? I really did too. I love, I love singing those. A couple things that we'd love for you to do right now while we have a moment is one, check in. Let us know that you are here. You can do that a couple different ways. They're super easy. Just comment in the feed wherever you are watching, whether it's Facebook or YouTube or on our website. Let us know that you're there. Or you can fill out a connect card right at our website at cplaco.info. It's super easy to do. It's right on the front page. You'll find it right there. Or lastly, uh, you can use our app. It's the Church Center app. So you can find it on your app store. And all you do is go to the little button at the bottom that says check in and check in. It's so simple to do. And we would love to just know that you're worshiping with us today. And it's a way for us to be able to connect with you. If you're a first time guest with us, the first time you're checking us out, if you check in with us, we'd love to send you something special and just connect with you that way. So make sure and do so today. Second thing is make sure and share this worship experience with your friends. Um, we always say it's great to invite your friends to church. Uh, this is maybe the easiest time ever to do it. It's so easy to share stuff online uh, as a text message. Go ahead and send the link to your friends. Text them, say, hey, I'm worshiping Crosspoint right now. Join me, send the link with it. And then more and more people will get to figure out how they can live their best life connected with God. So connect with us, fill out that connect card, and share the feed. All right, we've got one more song for you coming up next to sing, and then we're gonna get into our digging into this message about King David and his meeting with the giant Goliath. One, two, three. Mm -hmm.
Lord, we thank you that we can tell the story of your sacrifice, your son's sacrifice, Lord, that you you came to earth as a baby, you lived, you died the worst death, Lord, and three days later you rose from the dead so that we can be in right relationship with you. May this truth sink deep into our souls and may your Holy Spirit stir within us in this place so we can put on your love and your confidence, Lord, your salvation, your goodness, so we can be your hands and feet to the people we see. Be with us this day and go ahead of us in the week to come. By all of this in your powerful and holy name, amen. I am always joyful to be able to invite you into being generous to the ministry here at Crosspoint. Because I know that for every uh, resource that is donated here, whether it's your time, whether it's your gifts, whether it's your financial resources, that here through Crosspoint, we use those directly to help people get connected to God. Uh, it's so incredible to be a part of a church whose mission is focused outside of ourselves and it's all about helping other people uh, know the love of Jesus, to know that God is with them always, to know that they're enough for him, and to know that no matter where they've been, no matter what they've done in their lives, that God loves them, forgives them, and wants them to be a part of his family. That's what we're all about here at Crosspoint, and that's why, hopefully, that you give generously to our ministry here. Because it's not about us. It's not about um, us as an organization, as a church. It's not about you. It's about what God does through us together. So thank you for giving generously each week, each time that you worship, or even if you set it up so you give regularly, uh, out of automatically, out of what God has blessed you with, that is a true joy and a true blessing to us as well. So thank you for that. Uh, on the screen you're going to see a few different ways that you can give today, and um, please take this moment to give generously. Hey Cross Pointers, it's time to dig into scripture today. We are in the final week of our King David series, and we're finally getting to the story that most of you, many of you probably know, the story of David and Goliath. It's in 1 Samuel chapter 17. Go ahead and look it up on the other device you have going right now, and we can follow along together. This is a story of David when he was a young man coming into a battle with a giant. Have you ever had a chance to do that? Have you ever been in the presence of somebody who was a giant to you? In fact, have you ever been in the presence of somebody who was over seven feet tall? Like you see people playing basketball uh, who are really that tall, but they're kind of run other tall people so they don't seem that tall. But have you ever been in the physical presence of somebody who was seven feet tall? I have, and guess where it was? It was on a basketball court. Kid you not, when I lived in Wisconsin, we used to play basketball every Tuesday night. A great group of guys got together, just had a lot of fun. Um, and I play with tall people. I'm not a tall guy. I'm, I'm average, like 5'10". play with guys that are 6'2", 6'4", 6'6". I mean, it's pretty big. Hard to shoot over them. The tall, you know, the wingspans and everything else. One day, we needed a couple extra guys and we called in some friends. And they said, hey, we've got this friend in town. He wants to come play basketball with us. And of course, we say, yeah, bring him along. And so we are there getting ready, tying my shoes. I look up and these guys are coming in from outside and they have their friend with them. Their friend, who has to, in order to get through the doorway, has to stoop down low and bend over. And when he gets through the door, and when he stands back up, his head goes above the doorway. This guy was seven feet tall. And of course, the first time I meet him, we're playing basketball together, right? Um, I had to make sure he was on my team, right? <laughs> I had to move everything around to make sure I was actually on his team, because you don't want to play against him, because he's so tall. But to be in the presence of somebody who is that big, is just intimidating. It doesn't matter how confident you are in your skills, it doesn't matter how tall you are, when somebody's just that big, it just, it's intimidating no matter what it is. And this is what happened to the Israelites so long ago. This is the story of David and Goliath. It's a story of, of being in the presence of somebody, a power, a strength that you don't have, that you can't ever get, that intimidates you, that you don't know how to defeat, and that you're stuck with battling and you don't know how you're going to win. Sound familiar? Being in a battle, you don't know how you're going to win. This is life for many of us right now. How do we make it work? The question for us today is this, where do you get your strength? All right, that's the question we're gonna stick with. Where do you get your strength? If we can answer that question well by the time we're done here, you're gonna have some great tools to go into this week with. Where do you get your strength? All right, so, 
David, at this point in the story, is a young man. He's uh, the youngest of eight sons of Jesse, and it's his job to be the shepherd. He's out in the fields all day just taking care of flocks of sheep. Not a glamorous job, kind of a crummy job, but it's important. It's a job that's going to prepare him for the things that he needs to do later. God knows this. His father knows this. It's good for him. It's building character, right? So where does he get his strength? Well, it comes from this experience. It comes from, well, the things that he's doing. It comes from going through the trials that he has being a shepherd. When lions or animals come and try to steal part of his flock, well, what does he have to do? He has to defend them. He learns this. He grows in it. He grows in strength. So one day, the Israelites are in battle with the Philistines. This is where 1 Samuel chapter 17 comes in. Flip over there and read more about this. The Philistines are battling the Israelites, and they're at the tops of two hills. There's a valley in between, and the Philistines send out their champion. This is a common way to solve disputes back in the day where each side just sends one champion out. Whoever wins the battle, their side wins so that everybody else doesn't die, right? Philistines send their champion out, and his name is Goliath, a well-known giant of the day. Somebody who seems to be, well, just like that experience with being in the presence of a seven-footer. Except not only is he tall, he's enormous. His sword weighs a ton. His shield and his armor need people to carry it behind him. People, more than even one person. He's enormous, and he is their champion. How are the Israelites going to defeat him? There's nobody that could wield a sword like him. There's nobody that could wear armor like him. There's nobody that could defeat him in his game. They're afraid. Saul is the king, and Saul decides he's going to give them incentives to have somebody volunteer to be the champion. So what does he offer them? Well, he offers them the things that usually give us strength, right? He offers them money, right? When you have money, you have strength, you have power, you can do more things. But nobody takes the bait. Then he offers them status. He says, I will give you the hand of my daughter in marriage and you can join my family, the royal family. Well, people today will do lots of things for status. That gives us strength as well, right? To be a part of a group, to be a part of a club, to be a part of a people, to have influence over others. People will do a lot of things for that. They get strength from that. But even that didn't induce the Israelites. Even with that promise, nobody would be the champion. Finally, he offers them maybe the greatest thing of all. Are you ready for this? The greatest promise a king can offer you? If you fight Goliath, King Saul says, you will, get this, never have to pay taxes again. <laughs> That's pretty great, right? That sounds fantastic. That sounds like winning the lottery, right? But even that is not enough of incentive for people to go out and fight Goliath. They were too afraid. The enemy was too big. He was too hard to overcome. The strength that we had inside could not match his. And all of these things that we usually draw strength from, money, power, privilege, they weren't going to work. Little David has been sent by Jesse now to King Saul's camp. His three eldest brothers are fighting in the army. And when David arrives at the camp, he sees Goliath come out. Goliath comes out and taunts the Israelites each day, saying, Who will fight me? Is this God of yours really powerful? If nobody's going to fight me and defeat me, then your God must be weak. David hears this, and he says, Why are you letting this guy taunt our God, the Lord who has led you into this battle, the Lord who goes before you, the Lord of armies who has done everything for us in the past and who promises to give you this battle? Why aren't you going and fighting him? And all the people are scared. They tell him exactly why. They tell him what the king has offered them. And they show that they are afraid. David questions them all. Until finally, his questioning gets to the ears of King Saul. And King Saul summons him into his presence. And King Saul says, why are you scaring and intimidating my people? I'm trying to get them to fight him. You're not helping. And little David says, well, I'll go fight him. And Saul kind of scoffs at him. Says, you're, you're too young. You don't know what you're doing. You can't even wear this armor that I have. How are you going to fight him? And... David reminds him, look, this is not our battle. This is the Lord's battle. He has called us into this fight. We are fighting for his name, for his glory. It's not about us. I will fight because the Lord is going to win the battle. Did you hear that? David stands up courageously, knowing that he does not have the strength or the experience or anything else that, this, that the people he's opposing have. 
But he says, the Lord has brought us into this battle. He will win it for us, through us. Saul is inspired by this, and he knows he has no other options. So he says, okay, David, you'll be our champion. Here is my armor. Here is my sword. Here is the best of everything we have. Go and fight Goliath. And David looks at all these things, the things that Saul was trying to use as strength, which weren't working in the past. And he says, no. I don't need these things. These things don't work. The source of your strength, King Saul, in the money and the stuff, it doesn't work in God's rule book. It doesn't work in his economy. That's not what it's all about. Instead, I'm going to do what, the God, what God has prepared me to do. I'm going to go and use the tools that God has already given me. He says, well, when I was a shepherd and a sheep would run off, I would go chase him down. I'm fast. I'm quick. I can bring that sheep back. When a wild animal would attack my flock, I would go and I would kill that animal. The Lord has given me courage. He's given me strength to do this. I'm going to use what he has already blessed me with to go and fight this battle for him. So David throws away the sword. He throws away the armor. And he goes with the stuff that he knows, with how God has prepared him. He takes the tools that he knows how to use. He goes down to the riverbed. He chooses five smooth stones that he can use with his sling that God has already prepared him and gifted him to use. And he walks out into that valley with Goliath across from him, and he looks at Goliath, and he says this, Today the Lord will conquer you. Can you imagine this seven-foot-tall guy who's just enormous and huge? Can you imagine the laughter that came from that? Oh, I mean, it must have echoed around the valley. The Israelites behind David must have just cowered. They must have just been waiting for David to get destroyed. And Goliath spews insults back at David, insults the Lord himself. And David comes back to Goliath with this. Get this. He says, look, today the Lord will conquer you, and then everyone will know that the Lord rescues his people. See, it wasn't about David gaining glory or power or money or status. It was about helping the whole world, the Israelites who were afraid, the Philistines who were fighting against him, to know that God is the one who is battling. He was the one who will win. So David says, I will fight for him. And so David takes out that first stone. He puts it in the sling. And as Goliath, who is so angry, see him in anger, as Goliath is running towards David, David takes that sling, spins that stone, chucks it at his head, and the stone implants in Goliath's forehead, deep cracking the bone into the brain, and Goliath falls flat on the ground. In the silence that followed, the horror from the Philistines and the surprise from the Israelites, David walks over to Goliath, takes out Goliath's own huge sword somehow, and heaves it and chops Goliath's head off. The battle is over. God's promise that he would battle for his people was shown through the preparation that he had prepared David with and the courage that he gave him to fight that battle. His promise, preparation, and courage all came together in this moment for David and the battle was won. Where do you get your strength? You have a lot of battles to go through right now. There are things in your head that you are dealing with. There are things in your spirit that you are dealing with. There are things in this world that we are all dealing with that seem completely insurmountable. That seem like we can't even take step one to try to solve them or conquer them. It seems almost difficult. We almost just want to give up and walk away, but we know that we can't. Because tomorrow is coming and the day after is still there and we have to fight these battles. We don't know how. Where are you going to draw your strength from to fight this battle? In David, we see how his, his faith in the promise that this was the Lord's battle, that the Lord will win it, gave him the courage to go out and fight. 
the consistency of God's promise in his life to prepare him, even in the mundane things, in the regular everyday stuff that he did as a shepherd, that he was being prepared for a battle. He couldn't see it at the time, but I'm sure as he was getting ready to choose those stones, he was pretty excited that he knew how to use that sling. God works in these everyday mundane ways and the things that you are doing today to prepare you for the battles that you are going to face. Not one moment is wasted in God's relationship with you. He is preparing you for the things that he has already laid out in front of you. The question is, where are you going to find your strength? Will you believe that the Lord is the one who will rescue you, who will fight for you. You see, this has been a question for all of time. This is a question after King David's time. Even after the people who told the story of David Goliath for centuries and passed it down to their kids, it was still a question, where are we going to find our strength? Will we really believe that the Lord is the one who rescues us? Even so much so, to the day when Jesus was hanging on the cross. The leaders, the scribes, the teachers of Israel looked at Jesus up on the cross and they said, who will come and rescue you? If what you say is true, if you only trusted that God was God, well, let's let the God you believe in come and rescue you. They mocked him. They sent insults up at him. They said, well, he rescued others. Why can't he just rescue himself? It's a good question. Why didn't Jesus just rescue himself from the cross? Why didn't God save him that humiliation, that pain, that death? Well, we know the answer to that. He didn't save him from all that because that wasn't how he was going to save the world. He didn't use the swords and the armor and the regular ways that people showed strength and won battles in those days because it wouldn't work. He knew that he had to give himself, that he had to sacrifice himself, that he had to sacrifice Jesus in order to bring you and me back to him. He had to use love to win this battle. Love that would conquer all. Love that would conquer death, love that would bring you and me back into a relationship with God, a relationship that strengthens us each and every day with the hope, the knowledge of life together with Him. I mean, it's like the story when Jesus rose from the dead in John, when Mary goes to his grave, or the tomb, and sees that the stone is rolled away, that Jesus isn't there anymore, all she can think of is what the leaders and the elders and the smart people of the day were mocking Jesus with. Like, well, well why can't you save yourself? If, if God is who you say he is, then why can't he rescue you right now? Those doubts must have been in her mind as well when she saw that empty tomb. But as soon as she turned around and in her tears and in her anguish that the victory had been lost, when she heard a voice cry her name and say, Mary! She realized, she realized that the victory was won. She realized that Jesus was standing there right in front of her, that the Lord was there, that the Lord is the one who rescues, that the Lord is the one who has the strength for us, that the Lord is the one who wins our battles. And she trusted. And as she fell at Jesus' feet, crying tears of joy, she knew that in Jesus there is victory. Our strength comes from the Lord. Our strength to fight the battles that we have day in and day out comes from Him. Our strength comes from the Almighty Father whose strength goes before us into battle. It comes from the Spirit who prepares us each and every day in all the ordinary things that we do to fight for all that is true and all that is good. It comes from Jesus, whose love has truly rescued us. This God, this triune God, the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit gives us strength to fight the day. We fight in his name for his glory, and he wins. David and Goliath, a huge story, a huge story in our culture, in our lives, but a story that really reaches in to what God is going to put before you this week. I have no doubt that you are going to have battles this week that are going to be difficult, battles that maybe nobody else knows about in your marriage, with temptation, with your work, with understanding who God has made you to be with trying to figure out his purpose for your life, those battles, he knows. But he goes before us. He will win that battle. He will show you the way. And so we simply go and we fight in his name. Keep up the fight for all that is true and good. Know that Jesus has won. It's in his name that we pray and that we close this series. Thankful that God calls him perfect people to do incredible things for his kingdom. Amen.
Let's take a moment together and bring our cares, our concerns, our worries, the things we're anxious of, and bring them to the Lord in this time for prayer. So would you please pray with me? Heavenly Father, we come before you today as people who are humbled by your presence with us, that you would be the one who would rescue us, who would go before us, who would win the victory for us, that we would simply fight in your name. Lord, we just give you thanks that you're the one who gives us the courage to go into battle each and every day. We pray, Lord, that you would keep our eyes focused on you, that we would know the, um, that we would be in tune with the gifts and the skills that you have blessed us with, and that we would use the mundane things of every day, of life lived, just doing the habitual things that we're supposed to do, that you would use those as a training ground, encouraging us, building us up so that when you need us to fight that big battle, that we are ready for you. Lord, let us know as well that that battle is not won for us. It does not give us glory. It does not win us money or fame or power. But instead, it is all about you. We fight in your name. We fight your battles. We fight so that people would see that you are the one who rescues. So Lord, let our actions be guided by your spirit. Let our hearts be in tune with yours. And let the battles that we fight and the victories that we win be for your glory so that everyone will know that you are the God who saves us. We pray that you be with those today who are struggling with these battles, battles that sometimes just keep popping up in our lives. We pray that you would help us to overcome temptation that we would not give in each and every day, one step at a time. Lord, we pray that you would bring us to be a community around people who are struggling, that we might encourage them, we might give them strength in numbers, that they know that they are not alone in this battle. We pray that you be with those who are suffering with illnesses today. We ask that you be with those who are treating them, who are helping them to heal, doctors, nurses, and all medical professionals. We pray for our country as this healing and sickness thing has been in the front of our minds for so long. We pray that you would give us courage to keep fighting. Let us not fight about other things amongst ourselves, but let us focus on the battle that is ahead to fight it well and Lord, to use the best of our abilities and gifts and talents to fight together. We pray that you be with those in our neighborhood who are wondering how they might live this life, this best life that they truly want to live. We pray that you would use us with great kindness and words and action to show them that they can only live this best life with a connection with you. Let us help them establish that connection. Let us help them strengthen it simply by being a presence in their lives. Let us make great friends. Let us be friends to people who don't know who you are so that, well, we can be great friends and we can enjoy that friendship and bring joy through it, but so that your spirit might work in their hearts as well. They might see the joy that they experience, the, the love that they share with others, the peace that they long for comes from you. In this way, Lord, we pray that your kingdom will come today right here on earth as you promise that it does in heaven. Be with those who serve us as members of our armed forces, both here and around the world. Let them serve with great honesty and integrity. Keep them safe. Be with those who serve us in political office, both nationally and locally. Let them serve with honesty and integrity, reminding them that they are only servants. Remind them of this when they wake up and when they go to sleep each day. We pray for those who serve us locally as civil servants, firefighters, police officers, EMTs, and so many others. Thank you, Lord, for their service. Let them know that they are appreciated. And Lord, let them serve with honesty and integrity as well. In this way, servants are simply servants. In this way, the people of your world are taken care of. They're safe and they're secure. All people are safe and secure. And we pray that together in unity, we as a city, as a state, as a country, would gather around this unity. In all of this, we pray that you would continue to bless us, that you would be merciful to us, that you would show us your love, that you would always show us that you are the one who rescues us. So together, let's pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. Let's be the church together. Let's join with our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the world and even throughout the centuries by telling the story of God using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let's confess. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We take a moment to confess our mistakes and our sins, to be honest before God. We do so using these words together. Let's confess. Almighty God, you are the loving Father who seeks us out every day. We confess that we have been selfish with the things you have given us. We confess that we have not been compassionate to our neighbors. Forgive us for running away from you. Call us back with your unfailing love. Connect us again through Jesus' love poured out for us upon the cross. And by your Holy Spirit, let us show our neighbors who you truly are through compassion and and unfailing love. Amen. This is Jesus' promise to you, that when you confess your mistakes and sins, when you're honest and humble before God, he looks at you and says, I have rescued you. I have died for you. I have been raised from the dead for you. You are forgiven. Now come, live with me, he says. Live for me, live through me, live in me, live with me together. And in that promise, we take heart and we know that we are forgiven. It's another great week in his kingdom. And I hope that you can take up some great opportunities to be a part of his kingdom this week. First of all, let's celebrate together. Do you have any celebrations going on in your life? Birthdays, anniversaries, anything huge happening? Let us know. Uh, put it in the comments. We'd love to celebrate with you. Our whole community would love to celebrate with you. Secondly, here at Crosspoint, we're excited to be heading towards the fall season. We have a brand new sermon series coming up next week. It's going to be all about navigating this new normal. Big questions that we have with answers from scriptures so that we can make this, whatever this new normal is going to be, we can make it absolutely incredible for God's kingdom. So that's coming up next week. Hope you join us for that. Invite some friends to get some questions they have answered right here uh, at Crosspoint. Uh, we also have some brand new things that are going to be happening for the fall. Look for that in your weekly email. If, you have not, uh, if you're not part of our weekly email newsletter, you need to be. There's great info going on there. You can be the first ones to find out what's happening at Crosspoint. Just sign up at our website under the Contact Us page, and you'll be added to our weekly email, uh, email list. Uh, so as we keep going ahead, we're looking forward to fall. Uh, each Sunday, we are here with a live worship service at 9 o'clock right here at Crosspoint. So join us outside for that through the month of August. We're planning on right now, barring other events, to be inside for worship the week after Labor Day, Sunday, September 13th. We'll see how things go, but that's our plan right now. Everything should be ready to go by then. So plan on being here inside live 9 o'clock, Sunday, September 13th. If you're joining us from around the country or you can't be here in person, we will always be live on Sunday morning at 9 o'clock just for you and probably also 1030 and maybe some other times during the day as well so that you can enjoy connecting with God in a really meaningful way here with us at Crosspoint. We love that you're a part of our ministry from wherever you are worshiping with. You are a part of our family. Thank you for being a part of this family with us. With that, uh, go with God's blessing into this week. We have had an incredible time looking into the life of King David, seeing how different people in his story have helped him, have helped shape him as an imperfect person to do incredible things for God's kingdom. And that's what we are called to do today as well. You and me, imperfect people, forgiven by Jesus, empowered by God's Spirit to do incredible things for God's kingdom. That's you today. That's you this week. So be blessed as you go and do that. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you great peace. Amen. Have a great week, everybody. We're going to sing one more song, and we will be out for the day. Enjoy, and we'll see you back again next week.